The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN 906 AM Thursday morning. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and we got markets in positive territory to kick things off. We zoom in on the S&Ps. Last night, you sell off right into the close. You close at basically lows of the session in the S&Ps at 44.46. Since then, it's been upward action in the overnight session. We reach a high at about 7 a.m. this morning of 44.81. We're just off that high right now, still positive by about half a percent. NASDAQ NASDAQ 100 positive by nearly two thirds of percent right now, up 90 points at 14,537. You got the Dow up one third percent right now, 120 points in the positive, 34,370. Quite the sell off of the Dow yesterday. You were up at about 34,780. You trade down about 500 points by the end of the day. Bitcoin. Continuing to rise. We were at 43,530 early this morning. We're still up 700 bucks on the session on Bitcoin. How about Ethereum back above 3,000 recently at 3,021? Crude holding relatively steady. We were up to 116 handle last night. We're sitting right at about 114 this morning. We jump over to gold, continuing to rise. How about that spike in gold up to 1958? Uh, we got some economic numbers this morning. We got a weekly jobless claim number. Lowest number since 1969. We also got a durable goods order that's uh, far off the estimate. We'll get into that in a moment. Notes and bonds. Lower price, higher yield. Coming at you, folks. We're talking about a yield right now of 2.38%. 2.377 to be exact uh, on what I have. You got a slight reprieve yesterday up to almost 123.12. Man, the moves just remarkable in this market. You look where we were. Last night at 4 o'clock. The 10-year was trading at 123.11. You trade down almost a full point in the overnight session. 122.11 is right here on the chart. We made it, we made it to 122.16. Uh, yields right back near highs right now, approaching 2.4%. We jump over to the volatility index this morning. We got a low of 22.64 yesterday, still in, sitting relatively near that price level right now at 23.40. All right, jumping around to some of the headlines, let's pull it up and we'll kick things off with initial jobless claims, 187,000. That's the initial unemployment claim number, decreasing by 28,000. That's for the week ended March 19th. The estimate was for about 210,000. That's the lowest number since 1969. I believe uh, the one it beat was 183,000, the initial jobless claims number. Obviously, a lot more people in the country than there were more than 50 years ago, which is remarkable. Continuing claims dropped to 1.35 million. Continuing claims always one week delayed versus initial jobless claims. So that, talking about the week ended March 12th, drop consistent with labor market. Employers are desperately trying to hang on to workers. Um, I was cluing into Bloomberg real quick this morning when I was watching this 830 number because we got durable goods, which we'll get into in a moment, but we also got initial jobless claims. And what I found remarkable was that Mike McKee, who does a great job out there with a lot of their data, was almost like, wow, 187,000. We got to dig into what kind of adjustments we got here. Usually his take I agree with. But, folks, it's only 20 or 30,000. I mean, the variance in some of these numbers, it's actually remarkable that it's so steady when you think about everything going on. Uh, to me, the difference between 190,000 and 210,000 on a national scale right now almost meaningless, really, uh, with everything else going on. You're going to see more volatility than usual with everything in play here. We have parts of the economy opening back up. We have parts of the economy that are being hammered by energy prices. We have parts of the economy that are getting hammered by inflationary prices that they cannot pass on to their consumers. And then, of course, you have supply shortages everywhere, depending on what you're dealing with. All of that leading to volatility in a big way in the jobs market in both directions, in both directions, for sure. Okay, uh, and here we are for capital goods orders. Uh, U.S. orders placed with U.S. factories and business equipment unexpectedly declined in February. Uh, the value of cap core capital goods orders decreased 0.3% after an upwardly revised 
1.3% gain a month earlier. Here, bookings for all durables or items meant to last at least three years fell 2.2%. First decline in five months, reflecting a drop in orders for commercial aircraft. Excluding transportation, durable goods orders dropped 0.6%. So, uh, commercial aircraft with war going on. Not an attractive purchase with everything in flux in Europe, I imagine, for purchasing airplanes as maybe they wait to see uh, about European travel, international travel, et cetera, consisting. Nonetheless, we get those two economic numbers out this morning. Uh, the market kind of just takes it in stride, pretty much. As we check back to the S&P, we're up 21 points right now. You're going to see a little bit of volatility around that number. There's your 830 volatility. We're sitting basically to the tick of where we were on that number at 4468. All right, jumping around to some of the equities with action. We got Darden Restaurants out with their earnings this morning. Uh, Darden down about $2, a little bit of volatility on their numbers. And jumping back to it, they missed. Uh, so. I think they missed on earnings and revenue. Yes, they did. Earnings and revenue that missed expectations. Omicron variant hurt customer traffic, staffing levels, and its expenses. Uh, they own Olive Garden. They own a couple others. They own Seasons 52, which is a great restaurant. Not as prevalent as Olive Garden, but I encourage you to check out a Seasons 52, folks. If you've never been to one, uh, discover that restaurant like 10, 15 years ago when they were first just building it out. We're very fortunate in Tampa, actually, that some of these bigger companies, especially Darden, they'll, they'll start introducing, they'll try and take some of these companies um, in this area first before they expand it nationwide. And Seasons 52 is a health-conscious restaurant, yet very upscale. It's kind of cool that you walk into a place, it could be any five-star steakhouse or something like that, Maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit. Maybe not that high scale. But they have a great wine list. They have a great atmosphere, right? Maybe they got a guy in the piano or a woman in the um, on the piano in the corner by the bar playing some nice tunes. Uh, and with that, each of their meals, super health conscious. When they first launched, I'm, I'm sidetracking a little bit, but it's a restaurant worth noting, folks. When they first launched it, every single meal was under 475 calories. And some of their meals were a steak and mashed potatoes, uh, and veggies. Say, so how do you do a, a, a meal that's steak, mashed potatoes, and veggies, 475 calories, sitting at the bar one time, talking to the wait staff, asking them that same question? Do you know what the key was, folks? No butter, no cream. Now, making the meal good without putting butter and cream in, that's, uh, that's the, probably uh, the tough part there. But no butter, no cream, that's where all, uh, all those calories, all that fat really comes from. You get a nice slice of lean steak, nice slice of filet with uh, so a little bit of potato seasoned correctly. Nonetheless, uh, and, and that thing took off after that uh, in just going across the country, season 52. Nonetheless, not so much the case in terms of January. They're dealing with some problems. Buck 93 versus 210, they miss by, yeah, that's billion. I got to calculate my math, my math there. That's that's a $600 million miss on revenue when it's just uh, a decimal point, but you're talking billions there. Third quarter net income, $247 million, up from $128 million a year earlier. A year earlier, obviously still struggling the restaurants, uh, but they fall short. Fine dining business also disappointed. Yeah, so they have Capital Grill in there as well. Great restaurant, Capital Grill. Longhorn Steakhouse, Olive Garden. Longhorn saw its same store sales rise 31.6% in the quarter. We'll get into this a little bit more when we come back, folks. We'll be back with our man Kevin Hanks from TD Ameritrade, Fast Market. We'll be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S and P's right now, positive by 21 points on the session. Nasdaq 100, you're positive by about 83 points. Dow up 115. All the markets in the green this morning. Let's jump over to our man Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, fast market on the TD Ameritrade Network, streamed live right here on Tiger TV. Your host, Kevin Hinks, Tom White. Great guests, great lineup, folks. Break down the day's market action. They set up hypothetical trades. They walk you through them. They talk about risk reward. You're talking about trade management. You're talking about rolling. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yep, green across the board today, at least to start. Obviously, that means nothing once the market opens. But uh, we're up between, oh, a third and a half percent here to start the day. NASDAQ a little higher than that. Uh, good jobless claims data. Pretty soft, durable goods data. Uh, you know, durable goods data taking on a little bit of a volatile tone the last two months. Big number last month on the upside, 1.6%. Down about $6 billion or about 2.2% for this month. So not really surprising with everything going on in uh, autos and airplanes and things like that, that uh, we're seeing some volatility in that that headline number x transportation though was still weaker than expected so some of it is expected some of it the numbers are even more than expected but how about tommy the jobless claims number first time filers for unemployment insurance you had to go back to about 2009 to see a number that low that is extremely low and maybe tommy that's starting to connect the dots to another strong employment number in the first week in april yeah, you beat me to the first question, Kevin, which is kind of a, to expand, and you kind of already did on that jobless claims number. Quite a number, man. Um, now, you've walked us through it before, just for those listeners that haven't tuned in. In terms of on a historical basis, Kevin, right, you know, where this jobless number sits, somewhere around, what, two, two above the 200s, 225 or something like that. Really remarkable, though. We're now sustaining levels. It was it was at 210 for a while. We were like 215. Now we're pushing 190, or, or maybe the, the average is going to push down. Um, as you said, we look towards, you know, April, jobs, etc. But what's your take on the jobless claims number, for those that haven't heard it, because you've given me this a couple times, in terms of the meaningfulness of that number, Kevin, versus some of the numbers we get like a non-farm payroll and, and those. Right. This is a little more high-frequency data, right, because it's every Thursday we get that number. So you start to get a feel 
on a weekly basis of is the economy moving in the right direction in terms of the labor force. So now you can start to say, with these numbers so low each week, maybe some of those people on the sidelines, those 10.9 million open jobs that we see in the jolts number, maybe that number is starting to come down again. So hope you know maybe some of this data will flow into a, another strong jobs number like we got a month ago, Tommy. So it's certainly a positive number. Yeah, anything around 230,000, 240, 230 and lower is a strong labor market, Tommy. So this 187, that's incredibly strong. So uh, good numbers so far today, for sure. I think you've talked about it before, like a healthy churn, right? Just a healthy churn, man. We got, you know, how many hundreds of millions of people in this country, man? When you talk about 200,000 on a weekly basis, that's just sometimes the shuffling. But yeah, now we're under 200,000, man. It seems like that's the trend, you know, for sure. We got yields, Kevin, coming back up. We're near 2.4% right now. Market's catching a pop as well. Uh, kind of the trend from, from the last week or so. We have some numbers out this morning. Darden, okay numbers, but they're trading a little bit lower. They miss on, on earnings and on revenue, but pretty decent numbers. You're only off about a couple bucks from that stock, and that thing has had quite an acceleration recently. We're coming into the end of earnings season, man. We're coming into the end of March. What are you guys going to be talking about on Fast Market coming up at 12 today, Kevin? Like Folio is going to do a presentation on Shake Shack. And so what we like to do, I'm hosting today, Tom White, taking a day off. Uh, I like to do with the themes around that. When Mike Folio's doing Shake Shack, we're going to follow up with Chipotle and McDonald's today, Tommy. So we'll do Chipotle in the A block, Shake Shack in the B, and all things fast food today, Tommy. So uh, we'll, you'll probably leave the show a little bit hungry. Ah, that's perfect, man. I like all three of those, man. Shake Shack, uh, McDonald's, Chipotle. Uh, Chipotle, man, quite the, all of these stocks, man, quite the move. Chipotle from 415 to 1958. Uh, you just back down a bit. Shake Shack, I mean, it, it almost, Kevin, I look at, we. you were talking about some of the payment processors yesterday. You pull up a, a chart of Shake Shack, man, they have a pullback that's almost just as aggressive from 138 a year ago to sitting at 68 bucks. Just remarkable across the board, some of the volatility on these equities. Well, Kevin, we appreciate the time. We appreciate the conversation, man. We'll be watching at 12 noon today. You have a great day and, and have a great weekend, man. We'll talk to you on Tuesday. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. Always a pleasure. Folks, tune in every trading day, 12 noon Eastern time. Outstanding program. You heard the equities they're going to be talking about. They're looking at hypothetical trade setups. They'll walk you through setting up those trades, uh, talking about basically we all have our own biases, okay? They're not going to teach you how to magically make money with the system. What they're gonna teach you how to do is to take your personal biases and structure your trades in the best way possible to, to profit maximum off of your biases, okay? Because we all have an understanding of what we think is gonna happen, and there are so many ways that you can structure options trades, folks, that it's awesome once you start realizing the different ways you can do it, whether you're buying premium, whether you're selling premium, uh, whether you're going out duration, right? How far are you going out? Delta, theta, everything involved, great program. I've learned a lot myself. I know I'm biased because they're a sponsor, but I'd say it anyway, folks. I tell friends, I tell family in my life, check out that program. If you want to learn about options, outstanding program. All right, s and is up 22 points right now. You got the NASDAQ up 90 points. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks, see how they're trading this morning. Amazon shares, quite the pop from a couple weeks ago. Remarkable that just recently we were trading at a 2600 handle on Amazon this month. We're up at 3268 right now, somewhat in the middle of this consolidation area for Amazon, you've been in almost approaching two years now, which is remarkable. I think I said on a, one of my programs, uh, excuse me, a couple days ago, if you think you missed the run on Amazon yet, you're in Amazon or where it was trading at a year and a half ago. That's not missing the run, folks, all right? This is quite a consolidation. My take is uh, risk reward wise, a much higher reward potential, then Amazon eventually breaks out of this to the upside, then you see it down uh, to the downside. But boy, did not imagine, that many people probably did not imagine when Amazon was up at 3,700 last July, when it was up at 3,700 in November, that it potentially had a 26 handle coming at you in no time. So this market, it can humble anybody, folks. Uh, never think that you know better. The, the pandemic, 
it, it taught me one thing, and I hope it taught many people one thing, is that never think you're smarter than the market and never put too many eggs in one basket, folks. You may be the most brilliant person out there, uh, and something could come out of left field. A pandemic could strike, a once-in-a-generational pandemic, right? A war could begin. A, a meteor could strike the planet, okay? Um, now, that's, that's, that's a little excessive, but a pandemic's pretty excessive, too. And it, it happened two years ago, and we're just really coming out of it. Um, you know, you, you, I, I was talking about at that time, right, that I'm sure there were people. Imagine yourself a retiree. You like cruising, understandably. You've worked all your life. You've saved up a lot of money. You say, me and all my friends are cruising. This is the best. Retirees, these cruise ships, they have it made. I'm really strong on the cruise ships. I can't see them ever struggling when they provide such great affordability um, for everybody to be able to enjoy a few days out at sea. So what do they do? They put a lot of their retirement money into some of the cruise ships because that's the way they live their life. And then the pandemic hits and Carnival goes from 50 bucks to eight, you know? Don't do that. It was a big lesson and a uh, sidetrack there, but something I learned. We'll be right back, folks. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. <clears throat> Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got the S&P up 20 points right now. All the markets in the green right where we kick things off. So just to finish that conversation, because it was something I really did learn during the pandemic, um, is that don't think you're too brilliant, folks. I mean, I've been a big Disney bull as well. That was kind of a little lesson as well, that you never know what's going to happen, right? 
I think I nailed Disney the way that they launched the Disney Plus. But boy, they've had a lot of trouble with the parks and the movie theaters as a result of the pandemic. Thank goodness I didn't load all the chips in one basket. Okay, it's tempting sometimes to do that. And you may be right, but you never know what's going to happen. And there's no reason to load things up and put yourself uh, in a vulnerable position at a time when you really never know what may happen. Because I guarantee there's going to be retirees out there that believed in whatever cruising ships they were on. And they were right. They were right, but they didn't realize that how volatile things could be if you ever got a once in a generational outlier event, something like uh, a pandemic, and all you're invested in is a travel stock, especially a cruise ship. Okay, let's jump back to what we have going on in the market. We'll jump to one of my other stocks that's been struggling a bit, Uber. So this news out this morning, they're going to list New York taxis on its app in a new alliance. Interesting to see how this is a game changer in a big way. I saw a report this morning. Talking about medallion prices uh, getting a lift on this news, and it would make sense, right? Uh, if you're a medallion holder and you can now jump on the Uber app, going to be more attractive than if you cannot. Not sure where that goes for the medallion, though, when you can jump on Uber without a medallion. So that'd be interesting to see how that goes out. But Uber liking this this morning. It's trading a little bit higher. We'll jump into it in a moment. So they're going to list New York's yellow taxis on its app, the first alliance of its kind in the U.S. in an effort to ease a driver shortage and pressure on fares. Now, Uber, since I've been following it, uh, they spent a lot of money during the pandemic. Part of that was making sure that they were securing drivers, not just spending money on marketing to bring in riders. They needed drivers. Uh, the ride-hailing giant reached a deal with the New York City Taxi and Limousine Commission's technology partners, Creative Mobile Technologies and Curb Mobility. The company said in separate statements, their apps power the vast majority of yellow taxis and will now allow riders to book trips in taxis through the Uber app. So is Uber now going to control everything? They're going to control themselves, and they're going to control the taxi markets, which are both going to be synonymous um, and operate simultaneously. Uh, this is a real win for drivers. No longer do they have to worry about finding a fare during off-peak times. Yeah, I imagine it will be a, a, a win for drivers. Uh, excuse me, riders. No, drivers? Well, finding a fare during off-peak times. So no longer do they have to worry about finding a fare during off-peak times or getting a street hail back to Manhattan, went in the outer boroughs. So they're saying it's a win-win. Uh, I don't know. We'll see if it's a win-win for the drivers. Probably a win for the medallion people in the short term, unless it just does away with medallions. Because why are you going to be driving a medallion if you can just be driving an Uber at the same time? That's what I kind of don't understand in that part. Uh, but there's a little bit of a pop in Uber. You're up 4% today, trading at 34.38. You take a look at the run it's had from COVID lows at 13.71 up to 64 bucks. It's a nice area. If you're looking to get into Uber, uh, nothing to say this thing can't go lower. When you trade from 64 bucks, get cut in half, you actually hit a low of $28.28. But boy, eventually, folks, you're going to break this downtrend, and you're back to a nice area. That's the 618 of the full run you had higher, and you're also chopping around in this nice consolidation that you were in coming out of the COVID lows from about May of 2020 until October of 2020. Cannot believe they're approaching two years ago uh, was this consolidation. Remember when we were all in that consolidation and we first got that big breakout in November for the vaccine efficacy? Time is amazing. Cannot believe that that's almost two years ago that we were chopping around in the middle of 2020. Uh, remember how good it felt? Let's bring this. Remember how good it felt when we were chopping around here that we basically had just gotten back to even? I mean, the world was pretty messed up still at that time, right? June, July, August. Uh, do you remember the summer of 2020? Well, yeah, folks, we are 1,200 points above that price level. So it's it's when you think about what this market can do, remember the mentality of saying, geez, I can't believe we got back to 3,200 so quickly from 2174. Uh, looks like stocks are going to be OK. Right. You had Amazon. It almost doubled by that time. Uh, the winners and losers had separated themselves by that time. But the tech giants had carried us higher. Well, we're almost 40 percent above that price level. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're sitting at. 3,400. All right, we're 1,000 points higher. We'll call it 30%. We're about 30% above that price level uh, in about a year and a half. So that that's the reason why everybody's a little jittery. And if you want to see something really dicey, just look at the potential for a 382. I've talked about it before. You're talking about 650 points below where we're trading at right now, folks, 3,800. Okay? Now, here's the kicker. Something to keep in mind. So there, we just did the longer-term projection. Okay? Let me back. Let me... 
back this out again, which is longer term retracement, I should say, 3,800 would be the 382. Now I'm gonna zoom it in on this recent acceleration we've had lower in the S&Ps. You go from 4,800 to about 4,150, okay? That leg, if you're doing an ABC down, folks, the A to B, and this is an if, right? We haven't even started the C to D leg yet, but if this becomes a C, okay? Something to keep in mind as this thing starts moving here, okay? 4,808 to 4,150, I'm ballparking. That's 650 points, okay? You go from where we are right now, which is about 4,450, again, we're ballparking, okay? You got up to 4,500, but we're sitting at 4,450. If you trade down 650 points from 4,450, if as in if this A to B leg then represents a C to D leg, 650 points below that price level is 3,800, folks, okay? So interesting to think that if this becomes the A to B, if we have a C leg here that meets at about 4450 to 4500, if you run that A to B leg, we're pushing an area of about 3800 is where that A to B, C to D completes, which would bring in the S&Ps back to the 382 of the entire move higher. And if you think the 382 is a tough one to hit, just take a look at what the NASDAQ 100 did because they basically pegged the 382 almost to the tick. We got a low of 12,942, and on this Fibonacci retracement number, I got 12,912, 30 points away approximately um, on an index that's trading at about 13,000, and from there we pop. And boy, if that ever happens in the NASDAQ 100, you're talking about a leg that's about 3,700 points, okay? And that would bring you down to about 11,000. Right? Yes, 11,000, which is just under the 50%. That would be the area that the NASDAQ 100 bounced in in September of 2021. Folks, we came into 2020 at 9,000. Remember that. All I'm talking about is going back to 11,000. We came into 2020 at 9,000, not out of the realm to trade back to 11,000. I don't think it's going to happen, but keep those numbers on your horizon because when I saw the S&P, man, and I said, okay, if the S&P is going to make it back to a 382, that's 3,800, right? We all, we're all saying, is this uh, a bounce before the market trades lower? And the fact that the prices line up, that this first leg, if turning into a CDD, would bring us back to the 3,800, it's something I'm going to keep in mind, and I'm really going to be paying attention if we trade down to these lows and how we do that with volume, et cetera. All right. Let's check back to the markets as we slide a bit. We got the S&Ps on a short-term basis. We're falling, folks, right from 930. You were trading at 4470. You're down at 4457 right now in the S&Ps. You got the Russell turning negative right now with a little bit of a drop. The Dow barely hanging on to those gains, up 16 points, and the NASDAQ 100 up 33. We got crude backing off a bit, 113.55. Gold contract up almost $20 at 1956. Thank you, folks. Over some of the equities today. Right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We put the S&Ps on a one-minute chart, and just like that, folks, since I talked about them trading lower, we're right back to the open right now. You're positive 22 points, and you see the acceleration again on a one-minute basis. We jumped about 10 points in the last five minutes on the S&Ps. Back to a 15-minute chart. Uh, nothing but... Uh, a little hammer there. Down down to 44.56. We're back to 44.67. You got all the markets back in the green right now. Jumping over to some of the stocks with earnings or just moving. But KB out with their numbers last night. Uh, they missed. They're down 4.6%. You accelerate lower. You catch a little bit of a bit higher, but you trade lower on the open. Jumping over to KB Homes, they missed by nine cents. So they make a buck 47 a share. They revenue also missed, dealing with supply and labor issues that hampered its ability to complete home construction. Uh, lost 3.6%, so they're off a little bit from there. It's going to be a common theme, folks supply and labor. When you're building homes, uh, two important components, I would imagine. Uh, KB misses a bit. Now, to pull up KB on a little bit of a longer-term basis, there's your three-year three weekly. Uh, we're right back to the beginning of 2020, which is interesting when you think about the housing market over that time. KB Homes, back to the beginning of 2020 and 2021. Just like that, after trading up for 52 bucks, you were above 50 bucks. Uh, right? Yeah, fifty dollars and twenty cents this year. You're down to thirty-four bucks. What? You give up sixteen bucks. You're more than thirty percent off of the highs of KB Homes. We got rising yields right now, rising interest rates. That's going to put some type of a hamper on this real estate market, at least in the short term. All right, other equities moving down the line. Spotify. So they reached an agreement with Google. So they're going to let subscribers sign up for Spotify directly through the Google Play Store. So this has been a battle. Uh, that had been going on. There's Spotify, you're up 1.8%, uh, quite quite a, a dead cat bounce potentially, to say the least. Uh, you were trading at 306 in November. This being a one-way trip, folks, to lower prices. Gonna put that on a daily for a second, just to see that. I mean, you're talking about barely a pop on this equity from 300 down to 120, even today. It's giving back the gains. Look at that. On a five-minute basis, yeah, the market says not so quick. I would be wary of Spotify, folks. That's a dicey chart in a big way. And whenever I look at equities like that, is Spotify going to be around? Yes, they're probably going to be around. All right, they've built themselves to be a player, even though I never use them at all. But do they have to be around? No, they don't have to be around at all. There's plenty of music services, podcast services, etc. They're trying to become the Netflix of audio. That's the reason why they went out and they got Joe Rogan in his podcast, okay? They realized that they had a much better chance of surviving if they didn't go the way of Netflix of old, as in if Netflix hadn't started creating their own content, they would have gotten eaten up 
by the content creators themselves that they were paying the licenses to. Spotify was in a similar situation, right? They're paying license fees for that music. Um, they're paying license fees probably for other people's podcasts, et cetera. And they realize that anybody can do that. Just like Netflix realized anybody's going to be able to push out their content to people, they need to start creating their own content. That's why Spotify went out and they said they're going to really build out their library of original content. So the Joe Rogan Experience is now a Spotify original content production, right? Uh, I don't imagine that's the same thing, though, folks. I really don't. There's so many players in that industry. To jump over to the Analyze tab, you're talking about a company right now that's valued at $30 billion almost, $28 billion, okay? Uh, yeah, you were just double that. You were at $60 billion just a few months ago. I would be careful of that equity in the long term because they got some issues in a big way. Even on today, you see the action. You're barely positive when they ink a deal that you can sign up for their service through the Google Play Store. I imagine that would be a pretty big deal for something like Spotify, but no, the market, when the market is positive, even with the S&Ps up 17 points, Spotify barely negative right now at 148. <coughs> Excuse me. They talk about Match. Now, this is interesting. So Match had been sparring over Google with similar app store fees. You jump over to Match, I imagine they're potentially, they give it back as well. Still up 1.5%, but not as optimistic as the market was on the open for those companies. Nikola, so they are surging higher, man, uh, after they announced that they got truck production beginning in their Arizona factory last week, meeting a goal that had been articulated during its most recent quarterly earnings report. NKLA. You're still up about 12.4%, excuse me, 12.4%. Now you put this thing on a weekly. Watch out for this thing, man. But maybe you, you, you're finally coming into their producing cars. So maybe that's where you get a shift. Um, but boy, if that's not a dicey chart, then what is up to 93 bucks in 2020? And yeah, you've gotten some bounces, but every, look at this, every single time you've got a bounce, it's sold off almost immediately and you can barely spot this bounce on the chart. It's been uh, demolished, but they're, they're starting to produce cars, and that may be a game changer. They talk about the GameStop, AMC, Reddit stocks. Let's check in on those. I was checking them this morning. Uh, a little bit of a pullback on these equities. We'll put it back on a daily. You got GameStop down 7%. You're still trading at $129 from where you were. You jump over to AMC shares, down 5% right now. Uh, some of the other stocks that could potentially get a run, even Canopy giving up some of the ruin. They're down a percent right now to 702. Uh, always interesting how those meme stocks come out of nowhere. Trip.com. They are higher after China-based travel services provider reported an unexpected profit for the latest quarter. Now, here's what I'll say about this. Uh, putting this back. So this chart goes back to 2017, and you are well within a downtrend channel, folks. Yes, you're up 2.7% today uh, on trip.com, but I wouldn't be touching that one right now. And Logitech. So they get a big upgrade from Bank of America. Uh, I believe I saw somewhere that said it might even be able to double. With a buy rating, attractive entry point given their growth prospects and strong record of execution. Now, we were all familiar with Logitech in the beginning of the pandemic, right? I talked about how there were winners and there were losers. Boy, look at that, right to the 6182. Right now, you're up 4.7%. You're trading at 75 bucks. You're still almost cut in half from where you were at $140. You look at the run this thing had from 30 bucks up to 140. I got a Logitech camera you're looking at me at right now, folks. If you're watching me on Tiger TV, you're watching me through a Logitech camera that I have. Um, but yeah, we're back to a 618. They get a big upgrade, Bank of America. Uh, and I believe, like I said, potential to double I saw somewhere. Uh, don't quote me on that one, but a big upgrade for them. They're valued right now at $12.5 billion, Logitech. And uh, But yeah, always like when you're at that 618. At least you know where you're wrong, folks, right? Okay, it's always nice having a plan. You get in at the 618, all right, where are you setting your stop? Because you break through this area, you got nothing in between 30 bucks and 66, okay? Maybe you wanna make sure that it can't get down to this low. Maybe you're a little bit tighter and you make sure that it can't get down to this low. Um, but always nice when you get your back against the wall and you're trading an area at a 618 because you start getting into that 786, nothing to say that you don't retrace fully to the COVID lows. We've seen it happen many times, folks. We've seen it happen with amazing companies that benefited so tremendously during the pandemic that somehow they give back all the pandemic gains. Peloton, 
the poster boy for that one. Uh, still under where you were coming into 2020 as Peloton down 2.2%. It just doesn't stop, man. Uh, quite a pop yesterday, but giving back some of the recent gains it's had. Uh, Roku's had quite a pullback. Look at this drop down 2% today for Roku. Roku, below where you started 2020 off. Did not think that that one would happen in a big way, just across the board in a big way. All right, S&Ps right now. We're up 16 points right now. You got the NASDAQ up 33, Dow up 89 points. Russell barely in the red right now, negative by one. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. We'll be talking about uh, some yields. We'll be talking a little Switzerland. Be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now, kind of just chopping around what we were pre-market. You're up 20 points, NASDAQ 100 up 56. We get the Dow up 113. Uh, jumping around, so Switzerland, they say that $6 billion in sanctioned Russian assets have been found. Uh, the government says assets include property and tourist areas. They're relying on the banks and cantons to report the assets is what they're saying. It's going to be interesting to see how this plays out in terms of what the Swiss say they got going on in terms of Russian assets here. Uh, last week, the Swiss banking law Lobby estimated the country's banks may hold more than $200 billion of Russian wealth, a figure that dwarfs the official estimate. Uh, Switzerland's light-touch approach has long lured 
Wealthy Russians, but the business of managing money for the rich is drawing attention as Russia's bloody war on its neighbors has drawn worldwide condemnation. Yeah, I put it lightly, but quite the number when you talk about six billion, then you hear 200 billion thrown out there. Yeah, I imagine they got more than six billion over there in Switzerland. Alaska Air. So this one will be an interesting one. I imagine this is going to be the trend. They're taking their airplane, airplanes and they're going to turn them into cargo airplanes. They're going to convert two of their Boeing jets into cargo planes. Uh, they're going to serve destinations in Alaska. And yes, to put it lightly, air cargo, a relative bright spot for carriers during the pandemic. Uh, I'm out here near the middle of Florida, and we have a smaller airline near uh, airport. I believe it's near Lakeland that Amazon just does huge business in, man. Amazon, they get some huge factories out here. It's probably the fact that if you're reaching many parts of florida right uh i'm in an area that a lot of different parts are about an hour hour and a half drive you can reach so many cities to the east and to the west talking about orlando and tampa about an hour from you so maybe they're hubbing uh some of their hubs right there but you're talking about huge huge uh i see amazon planes in the sky all the time and i'm not exaggerating so cargo planes in a big way to put it lightly let's jump around boeing shares right now up three tenths percent. That news with China, man. That story about that Chinese airplane. I don't know what was going on over there, man. But that fall off, pretty remarkable. Uh, seems like some bad stuff was happening there. Um, hopefully they figure it out. All right, folks. Thanks so much for tuning in, starting your day with me. We got a treat. We got our man Basil Chapman coming up live. Live programming all day, folks. We got Larry at eleven. Bass Market at twelve. You heard Kevin. They're talking about Chipotle. They're talking about Shake Shack. We got our man Steve Rhodes at 1, Dave White live at 2, and my dad wraps it up live from 3 till 4. Thanks so much for tuning in and starting your day with me, folks. See you tomorrow. Stay tuned.